Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Marvel's What If, Episode 9. This one is titled, What If the Watcher Broke His Oath? So this is Episode 9 and it's the season finale, which I find kind of weird. I do like the episode, not as much as some of the others. And I'll explain. I think it's a... I don't know. I find it a little haphazard. And there was something I mentioned in the other podcast for episode 8. What if Ultron won? And one of my gripes that pulled me out of the episode right away was... Um, so Ultron in this what if... Uh, successfully takes over Vision's body. Becomes a major threat. Nuclear Holocaust takes over the air type thing. And then Thanos shows up with five of the gems and Ultron, uh, Vision Ultron's got one because he's got the mind gem. And he kills Thanos with like a half a second, splits him down the middle. And, uh, and I was saying about how they should have made it more savvy, a more intellectual um, victory. I mean, you didn't need, you know, five minutes of online battle. But something that showed the difference in why Ultron Vision is um, able to take out Thanos so easy. So, how that impacts this episode is, I'm watching the Watcher recruit this team. Because that's what this episode is about. He creates the Guardians of the Multiverse. And I just am rolling my eyes at the members in the, in that way. And if you look at the promo, they show Spider-Man, I believe maybe from the uh, zombie episode. And I think they should have changed it with Killmonger. Maybe they changed plans. In any case, I wasn't impressed in the long run or the overall arc of the episode. And if... Vision Ultron can defeat Thanos without Thanos being able to do anything. I mean, it's so quick if you watch that episode. Thanos steps through the portal. Ultron Vision says, fascinating. And then a beam comes out, splits Thanos down the middle. He takes the other gems, becomes a cosmic being. And then I want to believe that this team that he assembles can defeat this Vision. I found it ridiculous in that sense again though i said this with a whole episode the whole series so far love the animation like how they're tying in the music with the momentum of things the weight and the sound it's still all there the voice acting top notch i really like it i just thought it wasn't written well in uh in the grander sense there's a part in here also where I discussed in my other podcast, like, what was, I don't know, like, what are the rules here? And in one of these um, battles, I don't know, Strange Supreme or whatever, this is a, one of the what-ifs is Doctor Strange becomes the only entity in his universe, the whole universe is fucked up, destroyed. And this version of Strange competes with Vision... Infinity Vision Gauntlet guy and has his own time gem and it kind of works. I found it odd and they even mention they have a device. What was it called? The Infinity Stone Smasher? Something like that. Gamora uh, has a device and the series you put a gem in it and it can destroy all the Infinity Gems. Fine. And it was revealed that it didn't work because they went through a plan and um, enabled the whole plan and it worked. Blah, blah, blah. But he, Vision says something like, oh, the watcher didn't warn you. So apparently a device created to destroy the Infinity Stones will only work on destroying the Infinity Stones of the universe that it's native to. I mean, this is kind of fucking dumb in a way to me. 
All right, so the, the the theory about the gems not or the gauntlet not working in every universe is what is in the comics, sort of. Right, so you can't take the gauntlet of Earth six one six, take it to Earth seven one seven, and um, use the gauntlet to its effect. Maybe there were things you can do. And one of the in one of the comic books is a Council of Reed Richards, and each one like is a, uh, you know, some kind of what if type alternate reality version. They have gauntlets, and what they would do is, if I'm right, stick their hand through a portal back to their universe, because you know it is the gauntlet, and they were able to use the gems to some effect. What effect? Full effect? I'm not sure. It's a little hazy to me. These are the things that kind of make me like tune out, and it's because I'm such a nerd. So, looking at it from the other way, people who don't know as much might have had a real fun ride. I can see that. And again, period of my life, I'm going through things. Hopefully, the worst is over. Um, and it's time and I'll, I'll move on. But it is a it's something I have to be aware of that it's a little bit of a sad part in my life and you know, things are going on and it impacts my viewing. I try to be, um, you know, as open-minded and as honest with myself as I can. But I do think that in any case, this is how my brain would work. I'm not impressed with um, Sharon Carter, Star-Lord Chachala, Killmonger, I just didn't see these respective characters from their episodes being the highlight here and making any progress. It's just, okay, Party Thor, gotcha, you know, Thor of any, you know, level is a threat, in my opinion. And okay, I get the Doctor Strange... Well, I don't know, what the hell are you, uh, Strange Supreme, they're calling him or whatever, is giving them protections and magics that are helping them. But I just found it to be a little, I don't know, it just didn't feel right. It just felt like, um, this is not what I would have envisioned for a multiversal clash, a battle where being who's threatening a multiverse is taken out by this team? I don't know. So on that level, it might not have worked for me. And again, I'm just thinking about being focused and, um, you know, not biased in any way. So you have this weight of knowledge and history that I'm a big comic book fan collected them religiously up to about 2008 2010 where i just dropped off i would have liked a more epic storyline with more cosmic beings in it great that they use captain marvel every once in a while but you know where are you galactus your heralds you show the watcher who you're almost representing as eternity and I talked about this in the first one, so like it was annoying me. And great that they show him in the other episode, mainly, and he's in a battle pretty good. I liked it a lot. I just don't get this team they threw together and how it is in any way close to taking out Ultron. Then there's a little twist at the end, and they pull the... um. We were never meant to win type thing. And as spoilers go, um doing this week to week, I've been trying to, you know, I never try to outright spoil things, but this might be a spoiler alert. So it ultimately ends with Ultron and um Anim Zola amalgamation of fighting over control of the gems and the Ultron body, because he's a virus from the alternate universe with Widow. And then there's Killmonger at the end, who takes it. So at the end, Doctor Strange has got this orb of 
the two beings fighting, and he's got to watch over it. The respective characters are going back to the universe, and um, Black Widow doesn't want to go because the universe is destroyed. Well, lifeless or something, because, you know, Ultron is where he started. He just wiped life from the... I think not only the Earth, they show him going to other planets, so she doesn't want to go back. So they send her back to the one where the Avengers were killed as they were being recruited, which was like one of my fun ones, the murder mystery one, I think, if I'm correct. And then, so we all left with this image of uh, Strange Supreme holding the globe. So it is something that can come back, most likely will. But where does this... Um, where does this go? Can it go anywhere? Was this a springboard for a different type of animated show? I get the feeling, like I do when I watch The Mandalorian, that there is some love and greatness behind it in the sense of people who know the comics, who are good writers, you know, getting voice actors together. But then something is changing. During production, uh, during feedback from episode to episode, it, you know, I'm not going to make assumptions, but I, I'm curious that this nine episodes and it is the f- season finale is episode nine. You're showing Spider Man on the promo and he's not really in it. Now they do use elements from a lot of the episodes. And there's one episode where Trains opens a portal and all the zombies come out and it's what the zombies bring, he says. And as they cut away and cut back, it's zombie Wanda. But I wasn't impressed. I'm, I'm still grappling with the fact that there's a being here, Ultron, who succeeds in creating the best synthetic body he can, quote-unquote, vision, succeeds. He has the mind gem. He annihilates his Earth, his universe, you know, whatever, to a certain extent. Thanos shows up with five gems. He gets killed without uttering a word, without doing anything. And this is the vision that is defeated. Ultron Vision Infinity is defeated by this group. I don't buy it. I thought it could have been done better. And a little more, um, a little more complex because I personally would have written a defeat of Thanos in the other episode that kind of foreshadowed how they could beat him here. Just like further spoilers, there's no fucking way they did. They're fighting this infinite Ultron Vision, and they're stealing gems from him, and they're getting gems from him, and trying to get them away and put it it just was like and start it just started annoying me so i don't i see that they're forced into this uh thing with the way they it was written and again it could be my mindset but i don't feel it was organic it didn't feel like it came out of other things properly i don't know if that's really correct again no People who aren't in the know, who are just looking at this for fondness, probably really enjoy this episode. I don't think there's a standout favorite to me, except that uh, Captain Carter is, you know, the first episode I really liked. And her presence here is strong, and it kind of carries over with uh, Widow, uh, their connection, and you know, fucking, you're in this universe. There's so many different things you're trying to keep track of. And I think they did it well. So on the whole, I'm thinking this is a successful series, nine episodes. Not done the way I would have done it, and that's fine. And I think they really had a, some missed opportunities to really go down as um a huge success. And these things might come back to haunt it. Uh, And I'm looking at, okay, so we got season two. Let's say you even take season two and never connect anything to any of the season one. 
you could have the end of season two begin the recycle season one, meaning so season two, they're not connecting anything. And then at the end of season two, that one episode will have some kind of chance situation, some kind of whatever that frees the two beings in Supreme Strange's presence. Like he's, he's watching over them as the watcher ends the episode and sends everybody to the universe. If you come back in season two and try to pick up with these characters, I think it's going to be a mistake. I'm not convinced that I'm interested in these characters. Um, like Gamora comes out of nowhere in this, and as much as I love her in the movies and her character in the comics, it feels forced like there was a template puzzle and they kind of forced the pieces together like there there was supposed to be more happening here more in the background more about this this infinity stone destroyer and again like i said the 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 logical leaps that i take are okay because it's comic book stuff it's just fun colorful spectacular um like i said on all fronts so many fronts it's just it's really good Borderline great, but my brain just can't, it just doesn't work well with what they're presenting to me. And that could be, again, it's so much of what I know about the comics and what I expect with my brain. You know, I'm, I'm running Avengers in my head for 30 years, and I gotta say, I gotta be honest about that. So, you know, summing this up, season one, what if I liked it? And I bought a line on liking it a lot. I'm going to watch it again. See how it all flows. Watch it in a big chunk. Because uh, I think I'm getting spoiled. And it's just the way things are. But I like to watch, you know, everything in one chunk. I think it'll improve in my eyes. I'll start seeing subtle hints and how they're weaving the story. But I don't think I'm ever going to get over the fact that Vision Ultron kills Thanos in a split second in, in in the same episode if you count in 8 what if Ultron 1 fights the Watcher in an epic cosmic battle and the defeat of this being who now has all the gems is the Watcher getting a spunky team together to take him on and the linchpin is a strange supreme who can give them spells that can have them survive the galactic conflagrations, or whatever the fuck word you want to use, like universe destroying explosions, laser beams that would, you know, kill entities and powerful beings, and they're surviving. And it looked pretty good. I liked it. And I've done certain things like this in the, in the, um, in my role playing, and as a matter of fact, if you look at Doctor Strange from the past, he was an entity unto himself. He was that powerful in the comics. He was taking on all these amounts of dimensional conquerors and beings that displayed power on a universal scale. And if you want to get nerdy, I'm talking about like Eternity, Infinity. Um, he had beings like the Stranger in there, and the Celestials, uh, Mistress Love and Hate. Chaos order in between her and Strange was right in there. And I love I, I still have a comic book. It's dis, it's like disheveled, whatever, but it's one of those big giant size Doctor Strange's. I mean, it brings me back to my childhood and I love it. And that Doctor Strange is kind of the strange supreme they're showing here in in the level. So I'm okay with it, but I I'm not I'm not sold on some of the characters that were portrayed or their what if spin offs. I'm super impressed with the widow connection in a lot of them, bringing Carter back in a pretty cool way. I'm, I'm it was really good and I'm, I was really uh, impressed on a lot of fronts. But this whole Guardians of the Multiverse thing, I don't like as well. Maybe it's, it's a weaker point for me. I like, you know, the whole thing, but 
again, I think in a nutshell, this boils down to uh, a really good season for most people. A good season for me. I think it could have been better. I think they had a lot of missed opportunities. And looking at it in the long run, it is a little bit more of a disappointment for me that it ends on this. And as I said a little bit, a little while ago about where they're going to go and what they would do. If you're asking me, you just start fresh again and you leave that um, ending of season one as a, oh, well, how, how are we doing? Can this, is this, can this organically connect together? Because I'm not really that, that interested in that sense. Um, now, if you ask me, I'd watch a Peggy Carter, Captain Carter, you know, Black Widow eccentric series. I mean, I'm really liking that part. There's um, elements of almost every episode that I really like. So it's definitely a plus and a success in that way. I just, you know, I just start thinking about how much I role played. I write my own adventures, and in my brain, I'm you know I'm probably. You know, in some cases, thinking I can write this better or something, which is ridiculous. But it is what it is. This is the product that's put in front of me. I'm enjoying it a lot. I think it's a success in a certain way. But I think this could have been a mind-blowing success, uh, overwhelmingly uh, superior product to what's out there. I'm going to say it is in the sense because I don't, like certain avenues that um other at all say dc went because when you watch some of their um hardcore stuff it really has some groundbreaking elements and storylines a little bit of um you know like dc will take a chance and do something a little bit uh edgy and, but then they, i'm not happy with the art or um you're sticking to this cookie cutter thing that they've kept going for you know two decades so it's a mixed bag, right? This has been consistently good. Art, sound, music, momentum, the weight of things, voice acting, every episode, high marks. I have more of a problem with the characters that they've chosen, the spins that they did on them, and some of the believability in what's going on. I hope that helps. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, journey into what if. I want to do... Season 2 for sure, and hopefully it'll be a better time in my life where uh, I'm down to one week now. And like I said, the worst should be over and I should be get back on a better schedule. I look forward to Season 2, that's for sure. This is right up my alley. Uh, cosmic stuff, bring it on, bring it more. Give me more um, stories about the Heralds of Galactus and... Uh, star-faring things, but I don't want to see um, a T'Challa Star-Lord involved in most of it. Um, I like a Party Thor episode. I don't want him in my last group that battles everybody. Uh, I don't really care about, you know, uh, the Killmonger angle and Gamora coming out of nowhere, although in certain circumstances I do like the individual uh, essence of the story. Um, so we'll see. I hope everybody's doing well. My best to you and yours, and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.